What's going on YouTube? Professor X8 here. Welcome you to my Guardians Rising set review. Now I mentioned in my pools video, which if you've watched it, then you'll have seen how poor my pools unfortunately were for Guardians Rising. Um, I mentioned in my set in that video that I didn't think it was worthwhile doing uh, a deck video just to do a single episode. I'd like to do two episodes on the one deck building, one tournament gameplay. So. I said that I was going to do a deck review, oh, not a deck review, a set review and said we're going to have a look at some of the best, um, some of the best cards that are in it, ones that you should definitely look out for, maybe try and get a play set of yourself. Um, we're going to look at all of the GXs, obviously, the most powerful cards in the de in the um, in the expansion set, and uh, other than that, I'm going to have a look at some of the rare cards that I think are worthwhile, might be good. Um, some of them are a bit difficult to play with, but anyway, let's. Uh, Let's jump into it. So, kicking things off, we're going to have a look at the GX cards that are available in Guardians Rising. I've uh, favorited all of them so that we can have a look at them. They're alphabetical, so there's no particular order that I'm going to go through them in here. But I'm going to talk about how viable I think each of them are, whether they look like they'll be good for a deck, whether they look like they'll be fun or boring to play with. So, first things first, Alolan Ninetales. For some reason I can't, there we go. <laughs> Couldn't bring it up for some reason. Uh, Alolan Ninetales. Very, very good card. Uh, has very good HP. 210. Survives a lot of attacks. A lot of attacks are hitting for 180, 190, 200. Those extra 10 hit points can be absolutely pivotal. Um, let's have a look at the attacks. See what it is. So Ice Blade does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It can be any of your po their Pokemon. So if they retreat something with 10 or 20 health left, Ice Blade them from uh, your active onto their bench. Pick up a few prize cards that way. Blizzard Edge, 160. You have to discard two cards though. If you discard your water cards, you can use um, some uh, some of the new tech like Aqua Patch to bring them back up out of the graveyard and reattach them to your Nine Tails. Um, I can imagine. It, I haven't had chance to play with it yet, but I've seen some decks. They do look fun. They look good. And uh, the real, real big um, selling point on Alolan Nine Tails is its GX attack, Ice Path GX. Two energy, two colorless energy, and you can move all damage counters from Alolan Nine Tails onto your opponent's active Pokemon. As I said, it being at 210 health means that if it's got 200 health on it, or somewhere close to, you can shift it onto maybe one of their GX Pokemon and knock it out and fully heal yourself at the same time. It's very, very difficult to kill the first Alolan, Alolan Nine Tails that's out, or uh, even the second one if they decide to save the uh, the GX attack for later in the game. Um, overall. I'd give it a solid 4 out of 5. 4 out of 5. So moving on. Our next uh, GX in the set is Dramper GX. 180 HP, but it is a basic, so you can attach a Fighting Fury Belt if you wish. Take it up to 220 HP and add 10 power onto all of its attacks. So the first attack is one of the most annoying attacks in the meta. Righteous Edge. Discard a special energy for a single energy that means you can discard their double colorless energies you can discard their um, flame energies you can discard anything that they have that is a special energy gone strong energies like <laughs> it's very very annoying it really really slows down their uh slows down their side of the field and uh whilst you're doing it you can build up things on your side of the bench um next up it's attack uh berserk for three colorless energy 80 and if your pokemon have any damage counters on them any of your bench runs it does 70 more so it's 150 for three three uh colorless energy it's not the best return on your investment three energy you can get more for example with something like maybe tauros or uh or other pokemon but 150 for three energy is a very good amount and chances are you are going to have some damage on your bench pokemon Getting Trampa GX into any deck is very easy, it being colourless. Um, all of its attacks are colourless, so it doesn't matter. It just eats up any energies that you give it and gives you some results. Its final attack, it's GX, Big Wheel GX. You get 10 cards. Shuffle your hand in, draw 10. That is massive. It's a full hand reset, effectively. Uh, the only problem with it is that it, you can be end afterwards. So... You, you run that risk, right? You use your GX attack to get some cards, but is it gonna? are they going to stick around? You just have to wait and see, unfortunately. Um, I quite like it, but you need to know that you're either your opponent doesn't have an end or isn't going to end you. For example, if they're ahead, 
and you use the GX attack and they're going to use their head and reduce their hand size, chances are they won't do it. So it, it's, uh, it's got its upsides and its downsides. I think you're better off saving your GX attacks for other ones. Overall rating, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5. I think 150 for 3 energy is a decent amount. 180 HP is a little bit on the low side. Like I said, you can attach a fighting fury belt though. And the uh, the energy discard, it's annoying, but if they're just playing basics, you're only doing 20 at a time. Uh, and actually, like a rock GX does 30 and discards any energy. So there is that. Uh, next up, we have Kamoo GX. Uh, it's a... Um, an interesting Pokemon. Stage 2. It's difficult to get to. You either have to go through the route of fully evolving a Jagmoo, or you have to use your rare candies. Uh, is it worth it? Well, that's for you to decide. Let's have a look at its attacks. Uh, well, let's start with its HP. 240. That's pretty standard for a Stage 2 uh, GX. be nicer if it was 250, um, but... Yeah, 240 is pretty solid. It's pretty solid. It'll survive most things. It'll survive a Sunsteel Strike. From a Sol Galeo, uh, it will survive. It will survive one volcanic heat, but not two. <laughs> it's a shame. But you can you can find ways to restore like some health off, some health back, um, which I'll talk about in a second. And that means you can survive maybe two volcanic heats. But uh, let's move on. So first attack, adamantine press, thirty damage. But your opponent's next attack does thirty less. This is one way that you can survive multiple hits, maybe turn those two hit knockouts into three hit knockouts whilst you charge up either Shred or its Ultra Uppercut GX. Uh, Shred, its damage isn't affected by effects on your opponent's active, which is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. If they've got something out that prevents you from attacking because you're a stage two evolution, e.g., uh, what is it, Glaceon, then you can just push straight through that. 130 damage. Final attack is up, Ultra Uppercut GX, no additional effects, 240 damage. Um, quite easy to charge up, actually. Uh, so the th good thing about Kamoo GX is obviously it being a dragon type, it can use double dragon energies. Uh, so Shred and Ultra Uppercut GX can both be charged up by double dragon energy and then a double colorless energy. So it means you're playing the dangerous game with lots and lots of special energies, but it's quick to charge up. You could effectively be doing 240 damage on turn two. If you get your Jagmoo down and one of the energies on, Rare Candy onto a Komoo and the second energy, 240 turn two. It's quite difficult to beat. So, what's up next after Jag... Oh, I didn't give a rating. I'd say, again, similar to Dramper, it's probably a three out of five. I think uh, it's second attack, 130. It's maybe not quite enough. If you stick a Choice Band on it, it does 160. That's still just missing out on some of the, the uh, really important knockouts in the meta. So, yeah, it... it it's an interesting one. Next up, we have Lycanroc GX. So this is the midnight form, not the midday form. I did a video on the midday form already. Go watch that if you haven't. And you uh, want to see how it plays. It's uh, it's an interesting Pokemon. Very good energy denial. Very good with the um, with like Jolteon and Vaporeon and that on the bench. So what are its attacks? Well, let's start off. Uh, what what? Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Mis uh, mixing up my words. It's been a long day. Um, so. HP, 200. It's good. It's not great. 200 HP, you are knocked out by a lot of Pokemon's attacks, especially considering you've got that grass weakness. If they have a Decidueye, it takes one Feather Arrow and one Razor Leaf to knock you out. In return, you don't do that much damage. 110 for three energy. It's not great. It really isn't great. And Dangerous Rogue. Dangerous Rogue's an interesting one. But if they know that you're playing like a rock, they can really play around it. 50 times the amount of po Pokemon on your opponent's bench. So it could do standard bench. It could do 200. With a Skyfield, it could do 400. But if they know that you're... Uh, sorry, if it was a standard bench, you'd do 250. Um, so chances are you can get a knockout with it. Uh, that's what those GX attacks are for, I guess. But um, there are better GX attackers out there. But what really, really sells like a rock GX in midnight form is bloodthirsty eyes. Lysander is going to move out of rotation quite soon. So when he does, we're going to need another way to pull Pokemon off the opponent's bench. Bloodthirsty eyes is like Lysander. Uh, you, when you evolve it, uh, when you evolve a Rockruff into your Lycanroc, you can pull any Pokemon you want off your opponent's bench into their active slot. It's decent. I mean, Lycanroc, it may, it may not be used by itself in a deck, but it's definitely very good for teching into some decks. 
The grass weakness holds it back. The slight lack of HP does as well. But uh, similarly, it being a stage one, you can technically use the evolutions on the bench to boost its attack power, at which point doing 220 if you get it for weakness. Uh, it's, it's a difficult one. Um, again, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 5. The Bloodthirsty Eyes is what really sells it for me. Next up, my favourite GX, but not necessarily the best, Metagross GX. Metagross is one of my favourite Pokemon, so when I saw that they were giving it a GX card, I was so happy. I was over the moon. I immediately decided I wanted to build a deck around it. And guess what? It's fantastic for building a deck around. Geotech system, its ability is brilliant. But let's start off with its HP. 250 HP. The highest HP that there is in this card game at the minute. So it means it survives a decent number of attacks. Obviously, if uh, you're being hit for weakness damage, you might not. <laughs> okay, something like Volcanion, uh, a Volcanic Heat would take you out. However, the uh, Altar of the Sun that was introduced means that fire and metal, fire and metal type Pokemon that you're running don't have weaknesses. So if you have that out, uh, the Metagross GX out, even if they land under it out, it's going to take them two hits to take down your Metagross. If you've got a shield energy, three hits. Uh, so, yeah, it, I think it's a decent Pokemon. Geotech system is what really sells it, though. Once during your turn, before you attack, you can attach a Psychic or a Metal uh, Energy from your discard pile onto your active Pokemon. So, my deck that I'm going to be using in pairs this up with... Um, pairs it up with... What's it called? Solgaleo GX, that's the one. Pairs it up with Solgaleo, so it looks for a way to pull the... Metal energies that Solgaleo has to discard for Soul Burst, not Soul Burst, for uh, Sun Steel Strike, and puts them back onto Metagross, giving you the ability to use the Sun Steel Strike every turn. 230 every turn is it's lethal. It's it's horrible. I wouldn't want to play against that. That's why I'm going to be playing it myself. Um, Giga Hammer, 150, can't use it next turn. It's a good backup attacker if you don't want to be discarded all your energies because you can still use Sogaleo's Ultra Road to be switching to, between two Metagross, bringing them in, switching them out, doing 150 each turn, so it's slightly more uh, 150 than a, um, than a Volcanion does. Uh, the other good thing about it being Steel-type is that it hits Sylveon, which is one of the most annoying decks that I'll be talking about in a minute. It hits Sylveon for weakness damage, so it takes it down very quickly. Algorithm GX, the GX attack. Search your deck for up to five cards and put them into your hand. That is just, it's insane. You can search your deck for any five cards that you want that could sort you out completely. You could have had a Cosmog uh, and a Beldum on the bench and nothing in your hand and one Metagross. You attach one energy. You could pull out two Rare Candies, the two Evolution Pokemon and a Sycamore or something. And suddenly you've got the two Pokemon that you need on your bench. You Sycamore for a fresh new hand. The only worry is that you're going to get End. If you get End, you obviously lose all of those and your GX attack was pointless. So it's another one of those ones. You have to really weigh it up and decide whether you think your opponent has an end and whether they'll use it or not. If I saw somebody use anything like Algorithm GX, I would be looking for an end. I would be digging for it. I would be avoiding all of my supporters until I could drop end to get rid of any cards that they put in their hand. So overall, again, it's probably a 3 out of 10. The, the, the ability is what's really saving it. The ability and the HP. Um, if Giga Hammer did a bit more, if it did 170, then it would probably be 4 out of 5 rather than 3 out of 5. Because you'd be hitting for 200, which would take down a lot of Pokemon. But as it is, I quite like Metagross GX. And I'm going to be trying to make it work in any way that I possibly can. So, next up, Sylveon GX. One of the most annoying Pokemon in the meta. Even more annoying than Trample GX. And I know I said the Trample was one of the most annoying. Sylveon is... Just that bit worse. Just that little bit worse. Magical Ribbon. Search your deck for up to three cards to put them into your hand and shuffle your deck. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad, apart from the fact that you can pull out any three cards that you want. You can pull out your Team Flare Grunts. You can pull out your Enhanced Hammers. You can pull out your Team Skull Grunts. You can just deny their energy completely. And as you uh, as you build up... Um, as you build up energies on Sylveon, you can finally get up to Fairy Wind, which does 110. Rubbish amount of damage. 110, it, it'll pick up two hit knockouts on some, but some it will be three hit knockouts. For three energy, 110 isn't a lot, but you can drop a uh, a choice band onto it to try and make it hit for 140, which point it will two hit knockout anything. You can also pair it up with other evolutions to try and enable uh, super effective damage being hit for. 
Plea GX, put two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and all cards attached to them into your opponent's hand. So you've just denied them all of their energy. They've finally got something charged up in the back line. They're ready. They're going to bring it out next turn. You return it to their hand. How annoying. How annoying would that be? Very. I do not want to be playing against Sylveon decks. They're going to be in the meta for a very long time. They're going to be almost as uh, almost as prevalent as the Sigil Blue, I think. They're going to be the deck to beat. They're going to be the deck to tech against. Um, I, I really don't like the look of uh, what the meta is going to be like with these guys in it. But you know what? Someone's going to come up with a way to beat them. Hopefully it'll be me. Probably not. But let's find out. Anyway, uh, HP, I think I mentioned 200. It's a bit on the low side. It can get two hit, knocked out, two hit KO'd by almost anything. Um, overall, what would I say? I'd say it's probably a 4 out of 5. It's definitely a 4 out of 5. But maybe a four and a half out of five. I think it would be definitely def no four out of five. I think it'd be a bit more if uh, Fairy Wood was a bit higher. If it was one twenty, if it was one twenty, Sylveon would be a five out of five because you would get the two hit knockout on almost anything. As it is, you have to attach a um, you have to attach a choice band to it, and they're very susceptible to field blowers. So I'd say four out of ten, uh, four out of five, even not four out of ten, uh, four out of five for Sylveon. Next up, we have the first of the Tapus, Tapu Coco GX. 170 HP, very low, but it is a basic, so it doesn't require any setup really. And you can attach a Fighting Fury Belt to it to make it live out that little bit longer. Uh, what's up next? Aero Trail, its ability. It is brilliant. You can just put it straight from your hand onto your bench, suck up all the energy that is available, and switch yourself into the active slot all in one go no retreat no charging nothing you don't need to worry about that it's straight up and it's straight there for that price it only does 130 with sky high claws 130 two hit knockout on most things so that is good and the fact that you can just pull it in and do the 130 at a time is very it's it's amazing it really is uh tapu thunder gx 50 damage times the number of energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So if you're playing against something like a Mewtwo, uh, Mega Mewtwo deck, uh, you're going to be knocking them out pretty easily because they're going to have more than five energies attached. Uh, however, other than that, people, if they know you're playing a Tapu Koko, will be very, very careful with their energies to play around the Tapu Thunder. Um, Obviously, uh, one of the best things to partner Tapu Koko with is Max Potions. So you have a Tapu Koko up front. They knock it down to say, if you've got a Fighting Fury Belt on you, they've done 200 damage to you. You've got 10 HP left. You drop another Tapu Koko, they swap around, you Max Potion the other, and suddenly they have to knock out two Tapu Kokos now. So it's a very good Pokemon. Its, it's ability is what definitely makes it. Its attack is mediocre, but it will pick up the two hit knockouts. And so if you can start disrupting their play, you can uh, pick up those knockouts pretty easily. Overall, probably a 4 out of 5. So what's up next? Tapu Lele GX, the new Shaman. This card, regardless of what else it does, is a 5 out of 5 simply for Wonder Tag. Which I'll get onto in a second. So Tapu Lele, the second of the Tapus. 170 HP, same as Tapu Coco, but they are both basics, so they can both have a Fighting Fury Belt. What's up next? Wonder Tag. Play it onto your bench. You can search your deck for any supporter that you want. You need that Sycamore? You've got it. You need that Lysander? You've got it. Just anything that you want. Skylar? Got it. So, I mean, it's hard to really explain how how much of a upside that is. Uh, Shaman, yes, it got you six cards. Oh, up to six cards. It let you draw up to six cards. But with Tapu Lele, you can get a full hand reset with the Sycamore. Or if you've already used uh, if you've already used your GX attack, you could use Harlers. Or if you need that Kukui, if you need that extra 20 damage for that win, Kukui. Whilst Lysander's still in the format, you can drag that out your deck. So with that alone, it would be good. It would be a 5 out of 5. Energy Drive, it's attack. 20 times the amount of energy attached to both active. So it's like Lugia's Aero Ball. So you can start charging Tapu Lele up on the back line with, uh, with anything that you want. As long as you get enough energies onto it, it's going to be picking up those one-hit knockouts. It isn't affected by weakness or resistance, so that does mean that you need to make sure that you, for example, against psychic types, it won't do 
the extra bit of damage. It will just do whatever the 20 times the number is. But it's pretty easy to get the energy attached, especially if you pair it up with something like Solgaleo GX. If you use Soul Burst GX and drop all of your double colorless energies onto Tapu Lele, you've immediately charged it up to 160 damage. And it just scales and it keeps scaling. They need to charge up their Pokemon as well. They can't risk it. And yeah, so Tapu Lele at that point, like Wonder Tag made it good enough. Energy Drive makes it fantastic. And then it's GX attack. Tapu Cure GX. Heal all damage from two of your benched Pokemon. You need a Psychic Energy for it, so it's a bit harder to tech into some decks. However, if you do find a way to get your Psychic Energy in, <laughs> your opponent's going to hate you. If you haven't got, for example, in my Song Alley Metagross deck, I might not want to use the GX attack. I might not want to use Soul Burst. I might not want to use um, Algorithm GX. I might want to use the Tapu Cure GX to take all of the energies uh, to take all of the uh, damage counters off two of my Pokemon. They will be furious. They'll be fuming. They've done all this work to get you down and then you just go cure it all up. So Tapu, Tapu Lele is the card to look out for. If you pull one in a pack, don't trade it away. It is valuable. I'm going to have to fork out an arm and a leg to get some of these. I'm probably just going to go with the one to start with because I can't afford more than that. So we'll just have to wait and see. So what is up next? Toxapex. The horrible, horrible toxic Pokemon from Sun and Moon. He was good in Sun and Moon. Is he good in the TCG? Not really, unfortunately. So let's have a look at him. Stage 1, 210 HP. It's pretty standard. It's bang average for, its, for a GX Stage 1. Uh, what's its first attack? Spike Cannon. Flip 4 coins. It does 30 damage for each head. Very low damage. Maximum you're going to get, 120. Your average is going to be, uh, average is 60. So you're on average going to get two heads. Um, however, against Garboda, you uh, you need two heads to knock out one of the Trashalanche Garbodas. And uh, two heads, you're guar you will get two heads, uh, what is it? It's uh, 11 and 16 times. So almost three three times in four, you will get two heads minimum and knock out that uh, that Garboda. Super intense poison. It's other attack. Your opponent's uh, your opponent's active is now poisoned, and you put ten damage counters on it instead of one between turns. Like that is horrible. That is a horrible amount of poison. However, they can simply switch out, and so at that point, it you just look at it as you're paying three energy to do 100 damage. Is that worth it? Probably not, unfortunately. Final attack, total shelter GX, 150, prevent everything, all effects of the attacks, done to Toxpex for the next turn. It's okay. It's not the best. It, The prevention of damage and effects is brilliant. It really is, but it's a one-off use. If, uh, if you're able to use it multiple times, obviously, it'd be horribly, horribly broken, but uh, even even if you've got that total shelter protection, they can lie under something off your bench and just completely bypass it. You do do 150 damage, so it's not like you're just using the GX just to prevent any damage. You do hurt them as well, but um, yeah, it's it's a difficult one to play around. Tr Trashalanche Garboda is very, very prevalent in the meta at the minute, and if you have 11 items in your trash, it's going to be knocking you out. Actually, you don't even need 11 items in it, do you? Because it does double, so it does 40 for each item in your... Six items in your discard pile, and Toxpex is going down. Five with a choice band. Um, for that reason, I don't think Toxpex is going to be very good for the meta at the minute. I think it'll be very difficult to play with him. But, you know what? If he, if you like Toxpex, go for it. That's what I say. I like Metagross, and I've decided I'm going to be playing with him. So... Yeah, go for it. That's all I can say. Out of five, I'd only rate it a two, unfortunately. It is one of the worst, um, one of the not so good, probably the worst uh, GX in this set, in my opinion. In my opinion. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the next GX. Turtonator GX. Interesting looking Pokemon. I wasn't sure when I first saw him when he was announced for Sun and Moon. Still not sure about him. But anyway, let's have a look at him as a GX card. Basic 190 HP, so he's higher than average HP. It's good, but it's not great. But you can attach a Fight Fury Belt, takes it up to 230. It's all right. What about its attacks? Shell Trap uh, for double colorless, so you can obviously just drop a double colorless, use it. 
During your next turn, if the Pokemon is damaged, you just put eight counters, eight damage counters onto the attacking Pokemon. So it's effectively 100 damage for two if they attack. However, you don't hit any weakness or resistance, which is a real shame because Turtonator would be fantastic if it was hitting for weakness and resistance. So next attack, Bright Flame, 160 discard two fire. So it's effectively the same as Alolan Ninetales doing 160, but discarding two energy. However, it being fire means you can attach a burning energy. I think I called them flame energies earlier. I meant burning energy. If you discard it due to uh, to use Bright Flame, you pull them straight back on. You're doing 160 every time. If you're playing against something like uh, Decidueye or uh, Decidueplume or Lorantis or anything like that, you're going to be doing 320 a turn. And it is it's very nice. It is, it is nice to be hitting those decks for that much damage. It's final attack, Nitro Tank GX. Attach five fire energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. Now, this attack is very interesting. First off, it doesn't say they have to be fire energies onto fire Pokemon. They're just fire energies onto Pokemon. However, they do have to be in the discard pile. So you do have to mill through your deck to get them there to make, get the maximum use out of your Nitro Tank GX. It's nice to be able to charge something up. For example, if you had two Volcanions on your bench, you could drop uh, a Nitro Tank GX. Uh, you could be using their uh, their ability, their flare up ability, or whatever it's called. I can't remember. Steam up, that's the one. Steam up ability to be getting the fire energies into your discard and take doing some damage here and there, and then use Nitro Tank to charge both your Volcanions up. Then when your Turtonator goes down, you have two attackers in your Volcanion EXs. So it's a very very good tech for Volcanion EX decks. So you should watch out for that if you uh, plan on playing anything that has a fire type weakness. Uh, overall, it's an alright card. What would I give it? I'd probably say it's uh, it's virgin on a 4. I'd say it's a 3.5. It's good because of the meta at the minute, but overall I wouldn't say it's the best. Um, that 160 damage, it's alright. Uh, the fact that you can attach the burning energies is very nice, but if burning energies cycle out and uh, there's nothing to replace them, then it's going to struggle. Let's put it that way. What's up next? Vicavolt GX. So in Sun and Moon, we got baby Vicavolt. In this uh, set, we're getting big Vicavolt. We're getting daddy Vicavolt. So it's stage two, 240 HP, bang on average for your GX attack, uh, GX cards. Uh, it's difficult to get to it, obviously being stage two, you're either having to go through a full evolution line or you're gonna have to be using your air candies. However, it's probably worth your time. What about Vicavolt? Charge beam, 50 damage, attach an energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon. One, damage, uh, one energy and 50 damage is very, very good. It's very efficient. Four energy, discard two energy from the Pokemon, 180. So that it's got that discard again, that's the only problem. However, if you pair Vicavolt up with baby Vicavolt, you can attach two energy from your deck per turn. You just need something to pull those energies back out the discard, put them back into your deck. So they're like an uh, energy recycler. And use baby Vicavolt to keep pulling them out, putting them on daddy Vicavolt, hit him with the super zap cannons. 180, it's a good amount. If you attach the uh if you attach a choice band to it, you're hitting for 210, which is a very important number. 210 is pivotal in this meta. 210 is the uh, HP of a lot of the uh GXs. Alone and Nine Tails GX is 210. Lele and Coco both have 210 with a Fighting Fury Belt attached. So to hit for 210 with the cho Choice Band is very, very important. Hitting 180 without the Choice Band still picks up a lot of knockouts. So yeah, it's very good. What about the Gigatron GX? Attack does 60 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. No weakness and resistance. However, the Wide Lens is still available. It was in uh, Roaring Skies. So it's going to be cycling out pretty soon. However... If you attach a wide lens and you use Gigatron GX, you are hitting for 60 or 120 uh, weakness damage on anything that's weak to it. So you could hit for 120 on Mega Ray, you could hit for 120 on Shaman, and we all know how many people love playing Shaman. Well, they won't like it with a Gigatron GX and picking up four prizes from their bench. So uh, what do I think of Vicavolt? I think Vicavolt's good. Again, similar to Turtonator, I think it's about a three and a half. It's not quite a four in that, you know, it, it takes a long time to get to it being stage two. And if you want to spend your time getting there, it's worthwhile, but it's very susceptible to disruption. The final, final Pokemon of the set. 
uh, the GX Pokemon of the set, Wishy Washy GX, basic 210 HP, which is a massive, massive amount for a basic. You can attach a Fighting Fury belt and suddenly you're at 250, so that is like a 5 star rating HP, 210. Water Gun, 1 Energy, 20, that's it. Pathetic, it's rubbish, <laughs> why would you ever use it? What's up next? 5 Energy, Torrential Vortex, discard a special energy, attach to your opponent's active. 5 energy for 120 and energy discard. You get less than that on a lot of other Pokemon and it, it's difficult to get to that 5 energy. It takes a very, very long time to charge up. You've got Aqua Patches and you've got Max Elixirs and stuff like that that can help you get there, but it does take a long time. And finally, Blue Surge GX, 220 damage, 5 energy again, but move all energy from this to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. So if your Wishy Washy is about to go down, Blue Surge, move all of your energies back onto your other Wishy Washies on the bench. And uh, so you don't have to waste too many energies. You can start charging up others. And you know what? They might be good to go and start using Torrential Vortex. And you can play some energy disruption. Uh, weakness to electricity means that it's very, very susceptible to Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko knocks this out in one hit. Even with the Fighting Fury Bell, it hits for 260 against it. So that's why I don't think Wishy Washy is going to be too great. Its retreat cost is three as well. So, overall, Wishy Washy again. Sorry about that. Wishy Washy, it's probably a three rated card, in my opinion. Um, slightly better than Toxpex, but not much. Um, and with that, that wraps up looking at the GXs. So, let's move on to the rare cards. So, we looked at the rare, we looked at the ultra rares, we looked at the GXs. Now it's time to have a quick look at the rares and try and figure out which ones are actually going to be good and usable in this meta. So I've pulled out the ones that I think might be usable. If you don't agree with me, then you don't agree with me. This is my opinion. I mean, let me know in the comments if there's anything that you think I missed or anything that you think uh, is rubbish that I'm saying, basically. But anyway, let's start off. First Pokemon is Absol. Now the reason I've pulled Absol out to talk about is because of, not because of Future Sight, although it is quite nice, you look at the top four cards of either player's deck and put them back in any order, it would be more impactful if uh, Pokemon wasn't so draw heavy. Um, you, you're often milling through your deck quite fast in Pokemon. If it was in something like, uh, I play Magic as well, quite a lot Magic uh, the Gathering, and if you could do that to somebody in Magic, it would be horrible for them, because you would just make sure they had land drops there. And they would very they would probably struggle to get through those before you were set up. What I am interested in is Doom News. You are uh, it's two energy to use, and it is a darkness energy and a colourless energy. And what you do what it does is you take all of the energy off your Absol, and at the end of your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon is knocked out. So it's uh, an instant knockout on anything. However, the real issue is they could just retreat, I think. I think that them retreating bypasses the effect. I mean, it'd be silly if it didn't. It'd be incredibly broken if it didn't. So if they retreat, I'm pretty sure Doom News fails. And you've returned all your energy to your hand and you have to charge it up again. But if they've got something in and they've got no way to retreat it, you, you use Doom News, then the best that they can do is knock out Absol and take one prize. And guess what? You might be taking two. You might be knocking out their GX. They've got no way of returning. And so for that reason, that's why I pulled uh, Absol up. I think there may be some good budget decks that you could build around it. Maybe slip it in with some other Pokemon. Um, maybe in with something like Umbreon. Just as a, maybe a one or two of that you could maybe start with out front and use Doom News once you can pull stuff out into their into their active slot that they can't retreat. Um, so yeah, that's that's one interesting. Uh, that's the first of the interesting Pokemon of the interesting rares that I think. Next up, you've got Alolan Golem. So, it's an interesting one. It's quite difficult to play with. Electromagnetic Rock Wrecker. First, well, first off, it's stage two. So you're gonna have to go through the full evolution line to get there. Uh, you're either gonna have to do a full evolution or you're gonna have to use your rare candies to get your Alolan Golem out. 160 HP is quite good for a stage two. It's not great. There's not really any way of boosting it, unfortunately. So let's just have a look at the attacks. Electromagnetic Rock Wrecker, 80 times, flip a coin for each electric energy attached to the Pokemon, does uh, 80 damage for each heads. So it takes, it costs three to use. 
If you've got three electric energy on it, you're flipping three coins to do 80 for each coin. You're doing an average of uh, 120. Uh, the expected value of three flips at 80 is 120. So 120 for three damage is all right. However, if you pair it up with something like Victini and you flip and uh, you get one or zero heads, you can use Victini to flip again and hope that you get two or three heads next time. And then if you just keep charging it up with energies, you just maybe four or five or six, then you're going to be doing a lot of damage with that electromagnetic rock wrecker. You're probably going to be getting one hit knockouts. Its weakness is fighting, so there's not that many fighting type decks out, so that's quite nice. Resistance is, um, is steel, which I don't think there's any overly relevant better ones at the minute uh, <laughs> until I've built my uh, Sol Galeo Metagross deck, and then it'll be, then it'll be perfect. But um, <laughs> so after that, it's final attack, heavy slam. 200 minus 30 for each um, each energy in your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. So if you're playing against something that has very, very light Pokemon, that is going to be doing a lot. It could be doing 170, or, or it could even do 200 to some Pokemon. Some Pokemon don't have a retreat cost, so... To be doing 200 damage for 4 energy is quite good, I think. There are easier ways to be doing 200 damage uh, there are more efficient ways to be doing it but I do think uh, it might you know it, it might be viable for some uh, for some budget decks uh, some anti meta decks we'll just have to wait and see next up we've got Confei so I've only put Confei in here for its ability each of your Pokemon that has any fairy type of energy attached to it can't be affected by special conditions so special conditions seem to be coming back with an absolute storm there's all sorts of special conditions on Pokemon now. Uh, there's uh, Salazzle, when you evolve it, you burn and poison the opponent's Pokemon. There's Victory Bell, which I think I've got here somewhere, yeah. Victory Bell with Pollen Hazard, Pokemon, opponent's active is now burnt, confused and poisoned. So Flower Shield prevents any kind of uh, any kind of special, um, special conditions. The best one that I've found that you'll be able to prevent with it, Espeon. Espeon, Psybeam, which gets the confusion. Not if you've got Confei on the bench. And the easiest way to get those uh, those fairy energies in is to either run uh, rainbow energies, or if you're running dragons, to be using double dragon energy. And uh, at that point, yeah, it's good. I mean, you can obviously use it in a fairy deck. I might look at building a, uh, a Xerneas break deck with it uh, to prevent any kind of special conditions, similar to how you'd have Mr. Mime on the bench to prevent bench damage effects and stuff like that. That's the only reason it's there. Other than that, it's not a very good Pokemon. <laughs> the worst, it's got an awful attack. Two energy, it only does 30 for that, and your opponent draw, draws a card. So I guess it, maybe you could try milling them with it, but uh, yeah, don't use it to attack, please. Next up, we've got Delmise. So Delmise, again, is a Pokemon that's here simply for its ability. Steel Worker, your Steel Pokemon's attacks do 10 more damage. So I'm gonna be using these in my Metagross Sogaleo deck, why? Because Sogaleo does 230, you put Delmise down, it does 240. 240 knocks out 90% of those relevant threats in the meta. You put two down, it does 250. You're suddenly knocking out anything in the meta. So, yeah, I can't complain about that. Anchor Shot, defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. I mean, you could maybe get it charged up and lock something out there whilst you're charging up a load of your Pokemon, but all in all, Steelwork is the only real reason to be using Delmise. Next up, we have the Garbodor that has set the meta on fire. Everybody, everybody and their mother is playing a Garbodor deck at the minute. Trash a lunch Garbodor. Why? Because it's only a stage one, so it's relatively easy to get out, and it's very, very cheap to charge up a single psychic energy. That's all it takes to do 20 times the number of items in your opponent's discard. They uh they could have been running a very, very heavy deck, a very tech-heavy deck, trying to get their Pokemon out. They've milled eight or nine uh, trainer cards into their discard, and all of a sudden you're hitting for 180 for a single Psychic-type energy. So it's uh, it's a horrible, horrible Pokemon to play against. When you know you're playing against it, you try and limit the amount of items you're using, and that slows your deck down. It slows your deck down an awful, awful amount. So other than Garboda, uh, what's up next? We've got Galissapod. This is a Pokemon that I was very interested in. So, Glissapod, it's got 130 HP. Armor, it takes 30 less damage from attacks, which means effectively it's 160 HP. And uh, if they can't do it in one attack, then it's effectively 190 HP. Um, but it's, it's an attack that is the real, real selling point. Resolute Claw. 
If your opponent's active Pokemon is GX or EX, it does 70 more. So for a stage one, one prize Pokemon, you could be doing 150 for three damage, for three energy. I mentioned on the GX that 150 for three energy wasn't great, but for a Pokemon that only gives one prize, it's fantastic. And the fact that it's very, very easy to charge up, it requires a grass and a double colorless. I think uh, Glissapod decks are going to be next. They're going to be uh, they're going to be wrecking the meta. If you attach a choice band to it, you're doing 180. And that's knocking out a lot of GX Pokemon and EX Pokemon. Um, you can obviously drop your uh, Forest of Giant plants to get a your Glissapod out very, very fast. I think uh, I think it's going to be interesting. I think you can build a very, very good budget deck just with the Glissapod. So what's up next? Lunala, baby Lunala, not Lunala GX. What's so good about Lunala? That first attack, Scattershot, 40 times the amount of psychic energy attached to this Pokemon. Now you might be asking, why is that good? Think about Lunala GX. That allows you to move all of your psychic type energies around between your Pokemon. So if you um, if you uh, partner up baby Lunala with big Lunala, you could be moving your energies from your uh, from your bench onto your Lunala to do a massive, massive amount of damage with Scattershot when you know you're going to get a knockout. And then the final attack, Wings of the Moon, move all of the energy from that to your bench Pokemon. Oh, you've only got 10 HP left, might as well Wings of the Moon, do a decent amount of damage, and then move all of those energies straight back onto the bench. Also, it does more than Scattershot technically for the 3 Psychic, but um, yeah, it's up to you. Uh, what is up next? Rayquaza. Baby Rayquaza. They're giving us all of the babies in this one. So, little Rayquaza, what's it doing? Why is it here? Double colorless, turbo storm, 30 damage. Not a lot, but it's that uh, it's that ability. Attach two basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your bench. If you've been playing something that does a lot of uh, a lot of discarded, you just bring out Rayquaza and just turbo storm a couple of turns. You're pulling energies out. One turn you pull it out two. Two turns if they can't deal with it, pull it out four. Three turns you pull it out six. All the time charging up your bench whilst they're trying to deal with your Rayquaza that's out there. It's 120 HP, you can drop a Fight Fury Belt on to put it up to 140. But uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to be using it for much more other than Turbo Storm. And I'll be back in a second. Sorry about that, just needed to blow my nose. So, what's up next? Baby Solgaleo. So what does Solgaleo do? Uh, it's It works very well in tandem with uh, Big Solgaleo for its second attack. Fangs of the Sun. 170 but can't use it during your next turn. Guess what? With Ultra Road, you can just switch out another Solgaleo out to the front and allow that to attack instead. You're doing 170 every turn for three energy. And those three energy, you can get those onto it very, very quickly with a Soul Burst GX. So I think uh, that's going to be another deck. You could probably tech in one, maybe two Solgaleo GX just to ensure you get at least one out and then have the two or three baby Solgaleos on the bench that you've got charged up. You can switch between and not have to worry about uh, not worry about uh, the second ability on the Fangs of the Sun attack. Shining Arrow does 50 damage to one of your opponents, so if they've retreated something onto the bench to try and avoid getting knocked out by a second Fangs of the Sun, just use your Shining Arrow, take them out from the bench. What's up next? Trevenant. So why is Trevenant good? Because of Poltergeist. And why is Poltergeist good? Because of Vileplume. Trevenant maybe won't be as good when Vileplume goes out, but at the minute, Poltergeist for a double colorless, 30 damage times the number of trainer cards you find in your opponent's hand. If they're worried about playing too many trainers because they think you might have Trubbish or Garboda, uh, then you play Trevenant down. If they've got a Vile Plume, you're locking up their items so they can't play them. You're going to find a lot of trainer cards in their hand. 30 damage is... It's, it's not a great amount, but if you figure you're going to find 4 or 5 items in their hand, you could be doing 150 damage for just a double colorless. It's very, very good. Next up, we have Coin Flipping Victini. Victory Star, once during your turn, after you flip any coins for an attack, you can ignore all of the results and fl begin flipping again. You can't use more that more than once per turn. So that is fantastic. Uh, you can't use more than one Victory Star ability each turn. So it's important to note that even if you have two on the bench, you can only use it once. So it allows you to use your coin flips again for a number of Pokemon. Sorry, something seems to have set me off. Anyway, I'll carry on. Um, you could use it with something such as your Alolan Golem. If you flip a coin for each uh, electric energy, well, guess what? If you don't get your result that you want, you just use Victory Star and hope that you get it a second time round. 
So that's what Vic Tiddy is good for. Sorry about that, Skip again. Just had to blow my nose quickly. Uh, something seems to have set me off. I'm not sure what. Maybe uh, it's just started raining here. It's probably kicking all the pollen up off the trees, and that might be what's affecting me. But anyway, let's move on. Next up, we have Victory Bell. Victory Bell, I don't know that it'll be great, to be honest, but I just I thought I'd put it here. One, because the art is amazing. That art is brilliant. And secondly, because of Pollen Hazard. Pollen Hazard is a horrible, horrible attack. Dropping three statuses onto your opponent's Pokemon is disgusting. The only way it could have been worse was if it had been something like it had been paralysed as well. So if instead of burn you got paralysis, or instead of poison you got paralysis, that would have just been disgusting. Uh, as it is, I don't know that it will really do too much, but I just wanted to bring that up and just point it out to you. Pollen Hazard, it's a horrible, horrible attack. Next up, we have the most annoying Whale Lord in the game. The most annoying. It's even more annoying than Big Daddy Whale Lord EX. Why? Because of Dive. Flip a coin if heads prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done next turn. If you have a Victini on the bench, there's a 75% chance that you won't be hit on the next turn, and it only gives up one prize card for three energy. But you can just keep chipping away at them with Dive. If you put in a. Uh, if you put in. What's it called? Um. Rough Seas. If you have a Rough Seas in play as well, you can just start healing up. The only problem is, obviously, if you go up against something like Decidueye with Bench Sniping, they can just take out your back line, not worrying about the fact that Whale Lord's just taking no damage up the front. But look at that grin. How can you not love that face? Uh, the final Pokemon that I've brought up is Whiskash. Why have I brought him up? He's, he's kind of like a poor man's Typhlosion because of Landslip. Discard the top three energy cards of your deck. Uh, stop three cards of your deck. There's 100 damage for each energy you discard in that way. So Volcania, uh, not Volcania, Typhlosion was discard the top five and you do 80 damage times any energy that you discard in that way. This is three, so you can only do a maximum of 300. Um, it might be good. You might be able to build up some kind of meta deck. Um, some kind of deck with maybe 20, 25 energies in and a lot of energy recycling and just whisk cash. And uh, once you get it out and you start discarding, to be doing, if you can hit for 200, you'd definitely be doing well. So, uh, yeah, that's the reason that I've put it here. Um, whether I think it's going to be, do I think it's going to be particularly good? No, in all honesty, it's weak to grass. And that's always a real, in this current meta, that's a real down of being weak to grass. But. Yeah, anyway, we're done with the rares now, so let's move on to the uncommons and commons, and after that, I will uh, move on to the traders. And I think this is going to be quite a long video. It's definitely got a lot longer than I thought it would be. So I'll see you in a couple of seconds. So, having had a look at the rares, let's move on to the commons and uncommons. There aren't many, which is a really a surprise if you had uncommons and commons that were going to be really, really good. You'd be, you'd be in trouble. Anyway, let's have a look. So, the first Pokemon that I've picked up... Uh, as a good uncommon card is beware. Why have I said beware is good? Because of rake it in. When you evolve a stuffle on your bench into a beware, you get to draw three cards from your deck. So if you're stuck on cards, you can just pull three out. Even if you're not stuck on cards, you're still pulling three out. It's not like a Rangaroo where you uh, draw up to three. You get three cards every time you evolve beware. If you could um, partner it up with something like Devolution the Spray, then you can consistently get three cards out your deck. If you need them. Uh, what's up next? Machoke. Why have I bought Machoke up? Because he is going to be the Pokemon that beats Decidueye. <laughs> you may not be asking why. Daunting Pose. Prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by your opponent's attacks. Your opponent's attacks and abilities can't put damage counters on your bench Pokemon. Decidueye is now going to have to snipe your frontline Pokemon. Because your Machoke is going to be preventing them from putting damage counters onto your backline. It is, you have to tech it in, unfortunately, and it being 100 HP is a really annoying thing because you can't pull it out just a level ball. You can, it has got three uh, retreat costs, so I think, I can't remember whether heavy ball is three or four. Uh, maybe in a deck full of heavy Pokemon, you can pull it in, and uh, yeah, it'd probably do some work for you, but having to ultra ball it out might be a bit of a, a bit of a worry. Next up, the, the trolliest Pokemon that Pokemon I've ever made. To be honest, it's even more annoying, I'd say, than Vileplume. Actually, no, that's a lie. It's annoying because of Vileplume. Limitation, your opponent can't play any supporter cards from their hand during their next turn. That's horrific. Why Pokemon Company thought that we needed something so oppressive to the Pokemon game, I, don't, I have no idea. I don't know who designed this card, but whoever 
whoever decided to deserve to be taken out the back and shot. That is, it's a horrible thing. And we're going to see lots and lots of Vile Plume Sableye decks. Uh, next up, and our final on common, is Pseudo Wudo. Why have I said him? Because of his roadblock ability. Your opponent can't have more than four bench Pokemon. Even if they're playing something like Skyfield, they can't have more than four. However, if they if you put something like a, a Parallel City down, then you can still reduce them to three. But they can't ever have more than four while Pseudo Wudo is sat on your bench. It's a very, very good thing to tech in against decks that require a lot of bench space. So, yeah. Uh, if you're playing a deck that's like that, watch out for Pseudo Wudo. Finally, we have our only common, Wishy Washy. Why have I put him in? Because of his schooling ability. So if you've got Wishy Washy GX and you're playing a Wishy Washy GX deck, you can play your Wishy Washy out and you can start charging it up. It's only got 30 HP, which is a bit annoying, but it is basic, so you can attach a Fighting Fury Belt. A Wishy Washy GX also counts as his basic. Um, however, what you can do is use its schooling ability once you've charged it up with enough energy so that you're only offering the baby wishy-washy up until the point where it's fully charged then you can just swap it straight out for the big wishy-washy it's also got a free retreat cost so you can just switch them around pretty easily um, but yeah that's all of the uncommons and uncommons so i will see you in the trainer section so having had a look at the uh, uncommons and commons we're now going to move on to have a look at the final few bits of the set the trainer cards so the first trainer that is of note in Guardians Rising is the Ether Paradise Conservation Area. What's it do? Grass and uh, grass and electric type Pokemon take 30 less damage. This is very, very good in uh, the Tapu Koko deck because it means your Tapu Koko survives that little bit longer. If you've got your Tapu Koko with a Fighting Fury Belt and with Ether Conservation Paradise, it effectively has 240 HP, which is a lot. That is a lot for a basic. Um, next up, we have Ultra of the Moon. For any Pokemon that you have that has a Psychic or Dark Energy, you reduce its retreat cost by two. This is very good in a Lunala deck. Um, I'm probably going to try and build a, a Lunala, Baby Lunala deck uh, around uh, Baby Lunala's second, uh, uh, first attack, sorry, Scatter Shot, doing 40 damage for each Psychic. You get five attached, you're doing 200. You get six attached, you're doing 240. You're taking out most of the better. And then you can just move all the energy back when you think you're going to get knocked out. So. Uh, this actually makes the retreat cost very, very light, and uh, I think it's going to see some. I think it's going to see a lot of use. Next up, we have Altar of the Sun, which is the one that I was talking about for my Metagross deck. It has. Uh, it means that Fire and Steel type Pokémon have no weakness, which is brilliant because otherwise you would just die to Turtonator, you'd die to, um, you'd die to Volcanion, and they're quite they're quite meta relevant at the minute. So. Uh, this is this is a very nice stadium for any metal type decks that want to be running. Next up, we have probably the most important item from this set, in my opinion, Aqua Patch. Um, it allows you to pull water energy from your discard pile to one of your benched water Pokemon. It's kind of like a Max Elixir, but if you know you've already got your energy in the discard, then you can just pull them straight out onto your benched water Pokemon. Uh, Dark Patch was quite uh, quite important in a lot of decks when that was around. I think Water Patch is going to be very, very relevant for the next... Uh, well, until it cycles, which will be a year and a half, I guess. Next up, Brooklet Hill. Maybe not the most important of uh, all of the stadiums, but very, very nice all the same. Once during your turn, uh, or your opponent's turn as well, unfortunately, you can look through your deck for a basic water or a basic fighting type Pokemon and put it onto your bench. It allows you to pull anything that you want out of your deck that you might need at that time. It's a real shame that it only works on basic types. That's the only that's the only real limitation to this. I say you can pull out whatever you want when you need it, but you can only pull out the basic types. But it means you can pull stuff out, like you can pull mana fees out, um, you can pull your star use out for if you need star you and star me for pulling energy back out the discard, all of that. Uh, what's up next? Choice band. I talk about it quite a lot. It's, gr it's good to have it back. Uh, the attacks of Pokemon that it's attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active GX or EX Pokemon. That's the important bit, GX or EX. Um, obviously, it would be if you if you just did 30 more damage to everything, it'd be very broken. But the fact that you could maybe pick out uh, one it knockouts on some of the GXs with some very budget decks now, uh, just by dropping a choice band on, is very nice. 
Next up we have Energy Lotto, which is kind of like Max Elixir, but it allows you to uh, reveal any energy card from the top seven cards of your deck. It's like uh, Max Elixir on steroids, basically. <laughs> so you can have a look through the top seven cards of your deck, and if you find uh, an energy, any kind of energy, so special, that's the real key. You could do the special energies of it. With uh, Max Elixir, you couldn't. You could only do... Um, you could only do a, uh, a normal energy. The only downside is that it does go into your hand, not onto your Pokemon. So, so I say it's like Max Elixir on steroids. It's not very good steroids, I guess. Uh, whether it will be played over Max Elixir or not is... Um, it's a matter to be seen. It's a very good deck thinner in that you can start pulling your energies out of your deck if you don't want them there. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's move on. Next is Field Blow, which is incredibly important. All of these float stones and fighting fury belts and choice bands and stadiums and all of that that you don't want in play, drop a field blower. Get rid of them. You don't have to put up with them if you don't want to. Choose up to two in any combination of Pokemon tool cards and stadium cards in play and discard them. You can even get rid of your own stadium. So you can use a parallel city to reduce your bench to get rid of your shamans and then field blower to put your bench back up to full and put some actual relevant threats down. The fact that it allows you to do that if it, to your own stadium, and it even allows you to remove your own tools, though I don't know why you'd want to, is uh, is really nice. Next up, we have Hala. So Hala is kind of like Ed. Actually, it's kind of like Birch. So Birch, you shovel your hand into your deck, then you flip a coin. With Hala, it's if you've used your GX attack. You shuffle uh, your hand into your deck, you get seven if you've used your GX attack, four if you haven't. So... Um, if you're building a deck that's very much around using GX attack very early to get a knockout, then use Haller. I think he's going to be really good. Uh, our next supporter card is Mallow. So I don't really, really, I don't rate Mallow at all, really. Search your deck for two cards, shuffle them, and then put those on top in any order. If you were to have one in your hand and one on the top, it'd be a lot more relevant. Whereas if you're playing it, they could just end you and make you shuffle your library. And those two cards are gone and you're wasting a support for the turn. So I don't think Mallow will be used at all. Uh, next up is Multi Switch. Moving energy from one of your benched to your active Pokemon. This could... It could be good. Um, it allows you to charge up your backline... And if your front line isn't getting attacked and you manage to get it fully evolved, you just need that one more energy, boom, multi-switch. You've moved energy from your back line to your front line and you're attacking that turn. Finally, we have good old Rescue Stretcher, one of the top, top items. It's like, it's like Super Rod. Some would say it's better, some would say it's worse. You choose one of the following two. You can either put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand. That means you can chuck a Pokemon away to an Ultra Ball and know you can just pull it straight back out at any point with the Rescue Stretcher. It's like a Revitalizer, kind of. Uh, the other option is to shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck, similar to a Super Rod, but the point is you don't have to put your energies back. There's a lot of decks that want the energies in the discard to pull them back out and not put them back in the deck. And so that for those decks, Rescue Stretch is better. Anyway, that's pretty much everything to do with the items. So I'm just gonna go straight back to the home screen and I'll just uh, just do a little uh, say goodbye to you all. See you there. Well guys, that is it. That is the end of my Guardians Rising set review. I really do hope that it's helped you and given you some ideas for some of the decks that are coming up and some of the decks that you could be building, whether they're budget or non-budget. Uh, obviously everything that I've said in this video is completely my own opinion so if you don't agree with it you know what let me know in the comments I love having a discussion maybe you can change my mind on some of the cards that I've talked about maybe I missed some maybe I uh, got some completely wrong let me know down below anyway I'm Professor XAid just remember guys keep on trading